On the cars that I've been reviewing for the past few weeks, I have seen the grills go really small or even disappear because you know hybrids, EVs, etc. So for a change, it's a good thing that I have a car with a big grill on it. Now, in today's scheme of things, big grills mean four things to me. One, it could be a BMW, but then again, this is tastefully designed, so it's not. Two, it could mean it's a saloon, but this is not. Three, it could mean it's an SUV. And four, it could mean that the big grill really needs to cool a fire-breathing monster of an engine. This car is both those things. The Aston Martin DBX is one quick car, I'm told. I wouldn't know because I never drove it in its standard avatar. It's been eluding me for years now, much like most Aston Martins that usually shy away from the glitz and the glamour because the typical owners of Aston Martin cars prefer to keep their refined taste a private affair. But the DBX 707 is different. It wants to be seen, wants to be heard because it is the fastest and the most powerful of its kind, at least until the newest and the tallest seat from Maranello starts prancing. But the 707 isn't one bit as aggressive as its Italian friends. DBX is often considered minimalist and the smooth curves in the hunchback also makes the DBX appear smaller than its class, more so in the images. But look at the 707 from any angle, rolling on its standard 23-inch rims at any speed and you know it means business. The carbon fiber skirts along the rocker panels, the bigger grille and the extended spoiler and splitter will all tell you that this is the faster sibling. But all of this is within the bounds of typical Aston Martin elegance. If you want to impress the onlookers with the sound of the V8, a nice crackling startup, what you do is, before you start the vehicle, press in either of the paddle shifters, press firmly on the brake, the red light over here starts flashing on the ignition. And you get that little pop right in the back. How cool is that? These carbon ceramic brakes are larger than the cast iron rotors on the standard DBX and still save 40 kilos. I was an idiot not to go to the Bud International Circuit and drive this car on the racetrack at launch. It's bonkers. Of course, this engine is sourced from Mercedes-Benz, from Mercedes-AMG, but the tuning has happened under the same guy who was also the ex-boss at AMG. So he knows this engine pretty well, which is why, you know, the development has been so good. They've been able to really push it, get these 707 PS kind of an output out of it. And to cope up with all that power, there's also the nine-speed gearbox, which has been given a wet clutch treatment, much like the GT4 door from AMG. Simply put, the German V8 is pushed to its limits on the 707, but speaks with British mannerisms, greeting the onlooker with a deep, warm voice instead of speaking to them in a rude, high pitch. With all that power also comes launch control, a race launch control. And it's pretty simple. Just make sure the car is in Sport or Sport Plus, depress the brake pedal completely, and you're ready to launch the car. Get it right and it will literally catapult from standstill to 100 kilometers an hour in a little over three seconds. Top speed, 310 kilometers an hour. Honestly, the acceleration is brisk. In fact, brisk is an understatement for this. And with that nine-speed transmission, it is an ultra-fast transmission, but every shift pause with this kind of acceleration translates to these little head nods. So the transmission, the way the power is laid out down to the road, it feels so dramatic, dramatic than even the Vantage F1 that we reviewed recently. You will seldom, seldom find enough space and time on our roads to really put the power down the way it's intended. That's the kind of performance that this car has. It's just crazy. So the most powerful, the fastest SUV tag or the claim in the world, it's not only about the higher numbers, it's also about how it gets there. It's just crazy. It is just crazy. And what's the use of all of this power, all of this speed, if it can't really go flat through corners? So to enable that, 
there is 48 volt electronics so this is not just a sports car on stills this is not just an suv from a traditional sports car maker it also goes like a sports car around the bends it is unreal how this thing feels how good this thing feels i think as of now this is also the best super sport uv that i've ever driven so that sort of sums it up for me Well, that exhaust note on startup is good. You really need to give this car the beans to be able to enjoy the raspy note of the exhaust. Of course, it's still not as sharp as what we've heard on the top of the line AMGs or what we've seen from AMG with this particular engine. But, oh my God, it's lovely. And then to throw the anchor down whenever required, you also have the trickery of the carbon ceramic brakes, which are standard on the India Spec 707. It all comes together to create a performance so enticing that you will want to take the DVX 707 to the track often and even give some low riding sports cars a run for their money, overtaking as you look down on them from your high chair. It's a feeling that very few cars offer at the moment. But these are times when what one shows to the world is more important than what it makes you feel. Does the DBX's understated elegance work in such times? Well. I'm sure it does. Elegance is timeless. There are still many out there who appreciate feel over specs and the DBX 707 has both.